Last weekend you held a couple of town halls in your district. How did they go and what questions did people have for you? It was really interesting. I was so happy to go back in district to talk to the people to find out what the concerns were. We held the town hall in conjunction with my seatmate, Representative Roger Freeman. We took a lot of questions. The city of Federway, we had approximately 30 to 40 individuals who came and, and uh, what they liked the most, I think, was that we said that we were working together that we were working together to solve the community's problems and to try to move forward uh, with a good future for the state. And they also liked the fact that we were talking about um, improving the downtown core of Fedway and how to move forward with making um, some improvements to our core. Uh, city of Algona, uh, we had a, I had a town hall there, uh, just myself, and um, uh, 30 to 40 individuals came there as well. And they are very concerned about a chemical release from Boeing that occurred at probably about 2008. And they're worried about the chemicals that may be in the water and the soil. And so Boeing is going to be doing some test wells in conjunction with the city of Algona to see how they can um, find out what's going on in that area. So that'll be an ongoing discussion and we'll, we'll know more um, very likely later this month or next month. What I am hearing from many, many people is they're concerned about jobs. They're worried about their futures. There are some concerns about education, but not as much as whether they're going to be getting a raise, whether they're going to be losing their pensions. They're worried a little bit about how the new medical care system is going to be affecting them. And so a lot of them are just trying to figure out how they can pay their bills from one day to the next. You've worked hard this session to improve the lives of people in your district. What are some of the things that you're working on? Well, I do sit on the Transportation Committee. We're working very hard to try to solve some of the problems we have. We're working to make sure that Highway 167 the improvements are included in the transportation package. It's so important to our ports, very important to my city to get the goods from the east side of the state to the west side of the state and then out from there. The ports employ about 60,000 people in our region. And it's a big economic engine for our area. And so we're very concerned about making sure we're competitive with ports from uh, Canada and ports from California. And so the transportation package is going to be very, very uh, important to um, uh, many of our uh, citizens in our, in our local area. And I understand you're working on a bill to help victims of human trafficking? Yes, I was very, very pleased to co-sponsor that bill to create a victim's assistance fund. Many people think that human trafficking happens in other countries. They think that possibly it's women being brought over here from other countries, but in actuality it's happening in our own high schools. And uh, girls as young as 14 are being um, brought into the sex trafficking uh, and they're brought from uh, state to state. And once they are engulfed in this, uh, the pimps that are using them, uh, these girls are individually worth 350000 to each pimp, 200 to 350000 and uh, per year. And so it's the new renewable resource. Uh, and they uh, get the girls hooked on drugs, uh, and they use them. And even if the girl is arrested, um, it's very hard to get her back out of the system. Um, because she believes she's in love with the pimp. She believes that her, if she has a child, that her child will be harmed. Uh, and she doesn't know how she's going to support herself. So what we need, uh, we created a Victims Assistance Fund that hopefully will um, uh, be used to, um, once, once a girl is arrested, uh, have a place for her to live, uh, find counseling, and find long-term employment. We have some churches in Federway that are actively working on this with the girls. And we have World Vision. World Vision uh, employs about 800 people worldwide, and they have been very much behind trying to do something about this problem. So I'm very pleased to be part of the solution. This week, a revenue forecast was released for the next two-year budget. What does the forecast mean for citizens? We will be receiving $2 billion more than the last biennial budget. The bad news is that it's not enough to fund all of the projects that we would like to complete. We're a little worried. We're about down a little over one billion from what we need, plus to fund education, that's possibly a, a little over another one billion 
that we would need to do the education funding we would like to do now. So we're going to have to be prioritizing. We'll be prioritizing our budget, trying to include those items that we have to do, and then the things that we want to do, just like you do with your home budget.